tweet from Ian Miles Chong, and it's a clip from some podcast. I don't know the name of the podcast. It's, it's, it says uh, um, the name of the podcast is Queer Something. And it is a man, a male. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the person identifies as some other way saying that he should not be required to disclose HIV status to people he's engaging in relations with, much to the fear and anger of those he is victimizing. Let me play the clip for you. And uh, let's talk about where the Democratic Party has brought us. Here you go. I put HIV positive on my like on my profiles. Mm. People don't want to touch you. Mm. I remember being on a date with someone. So I brought him back to my place. I was like, OK, like I need to tell you something like I'm mm. HIV positive. Mm -hmm. And I remember he like looked at me. It was like I murdered him. I'm going to pause right there real quick. Actually, let me play it through and then we'll play it again. I was like, yeah. I thought he was going to beat the shit out of me. He was like, I can't believe you wouldn't tell me. And like, you gave me HIV and like was oh, just like wow. losing his mind. And I'm like, mm -hmm. no, that's not possible. Even if I bled on you, like yeah. in an open wound, like that wouldn't happen. I'm undetectable. Yeah. And like, yeah. you know, but he just like didn't want to hear it. Now, like the way the law goes, like being mm -hmm. undetectable, like I really don't have to like Mm -hmm. disclose my status right. and you think about it like anyone that you meet on your first date or or if, like you're hooking up like are they you like have i have diabetes i have high blood sure. pressure you're not telling them any of this shit oh, yeah. where hiv is now like mm -hmm. if you are undetectable like you don't necessarily like have to disclose that i don't think you're putting mm -hmm. anyone at any risk that you have mm -hmm. to like necessarily go through that but yeah. it's because of the stigma and shame that i feel like i have to disclose people would look at that as betrayal I put HIV positive. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it again. I'm going to show you this and make a point. Positive on my, like, on my profiles. People mm. don't want to touch you. Uh, yeah, they don't want to touch you because you have HIV. And yes, medications have gone a long way. But who wants to live a life of being forced medicated to deal with a, a, a virus that would kill you otherwise? I remember mm. being on a date with someone. So I brought him back to my place. I brought him back to my place, he says. I was like, okay, like, I need to tell you something. Like, I'm mm -hmm. HIV positive. Mm -hmm. And I remember he, like, looked at me. It was like I murdered him. I was like, yeah. I thought he was going to beat the shit out of me. He was like, I can't believe you wouldn't tell me. And, like, you gave me HIV. Pause right there. You know what he didn't say? I brought this person back to my place and then, dis and then said, oh, by the way, I got to tell you. No, 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 no. You see, what he skipped over was that they engaged in activities that could result in the transmission of HIV. And then the guy, and then he told him. This, the point of the story is he engaged in adult activities with another guy without disclosing his status. And this guy sat, looked at him like he, he, he had been murdered. You're condemning someone to a life of medication, of going to the doctor, of fear, of constantly getting tested, of now, as this guy says, the shame and stigma, I'm forced to tell people this. You are condemning people to the same thing. Wild. And like, was just oh, like wow. Losing. And look at the hosts. Wow. Yeah. Watch this woman in the back. Her right here. And I'm like, mm -hmm. no, that's not possible. Even if I bled on you, like yeah. in an open wound, like that wouldn't happen. I'm undetectable. Yeah. And yeah. like, you know, but yeah, yeah. He just like didn't want to hear it. Now, like, the way the law goes, like being mm -hmm. undetectable, like I really don't have to like mm -hmm. disclose my status. Right. And you think about it, like anyone that you meet on your first date or or if like you're hooking up, like are they you like, have I have diabetes. Yeah, look, they have something. That's what he, that's what she says right there. Diabetes, I assuming that is a, I'm assuming it's a female. Th th I think they both look female. But you know, if not, I don't know, congratulations on passing. You have high blood sure. pressure. You're not telling them any of this shit. Oh, yeah. Where HIV is now, like mm -hmm. if you are under- you're not telling anybody you have diabetes. Is that what he said? Your first date or, or if like you're hooking up. Like, are you like, I have, I have diabetes. I have, have high blood sure. pressure. You're not telling them. She's laughing. High blood pressure is not a transmissible disease that can kill you, that restricts activities you can engage in, that forces you to constantly get medical checks up, checkups and take medication. Diabetes is a failure of your pancreas. You don't transmit that to someone many of this shit oh, yeah. where hiv is now like mm -hmm. if you are undetectable like you don't necessarily like have to disclose that i don't think you're putting mm -hmm. anyone at any risk that you have mm -hmm. to like necessarily go through that but yeah. it's because of the stigma and shame that i feel like i have to disclose people would look at that as betrayal but i will add one more thing just as an aside to these uh, uh individuals my advice don't say yeah 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 all the time when your guest is talking now there are certain circumstances where on my shows, for instance, I will say, wow, or I'll go, yeah, but I'm cognizant of when I do and you have to restrict it because I think she said, do we want to listen to that and count how many times she said, yeah, but that's a podcasting thing. Here we go. We have this from APA, 
the American Psychological Association, HIV laws that appear to do more harm than good. Really? What do you mean? Overview. Uh, Define HIV exposure or HIV criminalization, they're calling it. They say in the 80s, during the early panic around AIDS, states began to pass a new type of legislation. These laws made it illegal, often felonious, to knowingly expose another person to HIV. Many reflected the oft irrational fears of HIV that were prevalent at the time. Today, in many states, people with the virus can be prosecuted for such acts as spitting, even though HIV cannot be transmitted through saliva. These laws called HIV exposure or criminalization laws spread throughout the 90s, blah, blah, blah. And they're they're doing more harm than good. Here we go. This is from uh, NBC News. New California law reduces penalty for knowingly exposing someone to HIV. That's crazy. This is 2017. From WTTW, that's your window to the world over in Chicago. Illinois repeals HIV criminal transmission law. People with HIV can no longer be criminally prosecuted for exposing someone else to the virus without their knowledge. Wow. This makes Illinois the second state to repeal laws making HIV exposure a felony. I mean, willfully, knowingly transmitting a disease to another person. And they say, you know, whatever. Wild. Absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. Wow, man. That's where we're at. 19th News says HIV is no longer a death sentence, but states still have laws targeting people who live with it. And here's a picture of a black woman being arrested by a cop. (laughs) What? Dude, this is the game they play. These people are evil. Evil people. This is evil. I cannot even begin to describe how evil it is to have an infectious disease that you're being medicated for and go, excuse me. Well, the medication is likely, in all likelihood, making it non-transmissible. So I'm not going to tell anybody. That's insane. Absolutely insane. And this is what Democrats want. They're nodding along. They're saying, yeah, yeah, like diabetes. You know what I mean? Wow, dude. But I, I can tell you something. This is only for Democrats, really, for the most part. Just like the abortion issue, this is a self-selection issue for Democrats. Conservatives, I I would say actually the worst thing here is for default and post-liberals who are not so traditionally bound and like to act like liberals but don't like how far things have gone. You're the ones at risk. The far left, I mean, here's, here's the reality. That guy said it. When he disclosed after the fact to that dude that he had HIV, the guy looked at him like he had been murdered. I assure you, those two women, if you uh, engaged in activities with them and then told them, oh, by the way, like that guy, imagine, imagine they hooked up with that guy and then he was like, oh, I got HIV. They'd, they'd be crying. They'd be panicking. They'd, be having heart, they'd have a heart attack. They'd be, they'd, they'd be in panic mode. They'd be going to the hospital several times, getting tested, crying every time they did. But so long as they don't have to deal with it, they smile and nod along saying, yeah, screw that guy. Screw that guy who's now panicked and living in fear, living in fear, terrified that he could die, that he's going to have a life of medication now. He's going to have to go to the hospital and get some prophylactic. They give um, they have like a drug that if you get exposed, you can try and take it to prevent the risk that like to prevent it from actually taking hold and actually uh, developing into into full-blown HIV or AIDS. But those people would be in sheer panic. They only care. They they only act like they don't care because it's good for the show because, but this is where we're at. I'm telling you where it's going and you know better than I do. They're going to be getting kids involved. They're already trying to do it with the books in the schools. They're going to be spreading diseases. And you know what? It's self-selection conservatives are not going to be going to bars and meeting up with random guys because that's that's the antithesis of conservatism. Conservatives more likely to have uh, a wife and kids and live normal lives. And they're not really worried about this staunch religious conservatives who are uh, only ever going to be with their spouse. Don't have to worry about it at all. However, the far left And those that live these lifestyles are the ones who will reap the most harms from all of it. And so, you know, I'm sitting here saying, live the way you want to live, I guess. It's unfortunate. I don't think it should be allowed. But the end result is 
Like the abortion issue, it's a self-selection thing. You know, I'll leave it there. Next segment is coming up tonight at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash Timcast IRL. Thanks for hanging out. Smash the like button. Subscribe to this channel. You can follow me on X and Instagram at Timcast. And we'll see you all then.